my mom thinks I'm too sexy. There was one time when she called me on the phone and something was on her mind and she was getting sort of a little bit more upset and she finally broke down and said what was bothering her and she was like, you know, like Nina, when you do your makeup, you don't do your makeup like a whore, do you? I didn't tell her, but sometimes I was. Mom, you be the type of woman you want to be. I'll be the type of woman I want to be. Will you take your shirt off for me? Oh, my. look at her. Do you know what type of girl I am? Other in like a year I know. since I quit working so on the internet. You quit in in June. I quit right. the end of July. What what Oh my god, you, yeah. right after me. Yeah, what prompted you to quit? I just sort of I got sick of the sex industry. I got really sickened by it. I was having really serious body image issues and I really felt the porn industry aggravated them. I'd never done escorting before. Oh, yes, yes, you went to I Disney went Disney down World. to Disney World because yes, yes. there was a man in Florida, who paid me to come down for four days to Disney World, where he wined and dined me. Yes. And that was his gonna be his uh, she-male experience. The more I worked on the internet, the more surgeries I got, the better I looked, the more demand there was for me, so the more money that was coming in. But I'd always promised myself that when I was finished having all the surgeries I wanted, I would leave that business. He said he wanted to get fucked. I didn't think I'd be able to do it. And he even talked about that he wanted to um, be pissed on, and he may even want to be shit on, depending on how things went. But he would pay me 45,000 Canadian dollars to come down and do this for four days, sex and twice a day. Did he pay you $45,000? Yes, he did. How? And I did have sex with him twice a day, but I never shit on him, and I never pissed on him, and I never fucked him. You didn't fuck him? No. Did he fuck you? No. No? He would like jerk off on my feet and shit oh, like that. Forty-five thousand dollars. That's great. Ah, come on, totally. my feet. Give me forty-five thousand. Went a long way. You can go because you're not that, on camera. After that, was that enough? Was that enough for all the rest of your surgeries? And after that, it was like, okay, I've got what I need. I'm out of here. That was totally enough for all my yeah. surgeries. In fact, that's why I stopped working on the internet. Do you feel, feel good about yourself? Awesome. Yeah. Let me just say, you didn't look as good then as you do now. No, because I had surgeries since. A then. lot of yeah. surgeries. <laughs> Fucking perverts. <laughs> Gotta love them. I'm gonna hate my surgeries. <laughs> I think when I was really young, like up until five years old, I always thought, oh, I would grow up and I would go through puberty and then I would become a girl. I grew up assuming that all gay men wanted to be women and that as soon as two gay men met, they instantly had sex with each other because the chances of finding another gay man would be like so rare, so you would immediately do it. When I was growing up as well, my best, best friend from grade one until grade six was a female, was a girl. Her name was Mary. And she was like really butch, like super, super tough. And when people made fun of us, they always said, Mary is a boy, Rodney is a girl. And I haven't seen Mary since high school, but I hear now that she lives as a man. I do think about going all the way and having a full sex change sometimes. There's two things that make me really tentative about it. The one is I worry about um, having like no testosterone at all in my body or just the very little that my liver produces. 
Without that testosterone, a lot of girls lose their ambition or they lose their drive or their zest for life and become really depressed. It's a chemical reaction of not having enough testosterone. Like I had a dog when we were growing up, it, like a male dog, and we had our dog fixed so he wouldn't get the female dogs in the neighborhood pregnant. But after we did that, like my dog just sort of laid around the house and got fat. It didn't, leave, it didn't cross the road or it didn't do anything. And uh, I can't believe I'm calling my dog an it. <laughs> he didn't do anything. And he got fat after he was castrated and he just laid around the house and just wasn't the same dog anymore. I worry that I'm not passable enough to have a sex change and that even if I got a sex change, people would still know I was a transsexual. And so heterosexual men would be like, well, she used to be a guy, so they wouldn't want to date me. But then I wouldn't really have guys who like transsexuals to date either. And so I think it might be a really lonely life and that would scares me a lot. Although, I guess recently I've met heterosexual men who would say, well, do, if you had a sex change, I would go out with you. And so, I guess some guys are more understanding about it. But that's the thing that would freak me out the most, is, is being alone or just knowing that it's going to be that much harder to find a mate. That would scare me. I don't feel like I have to justify my life by saying, well, you know, I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. And so, you should accept me and have like compassion f for my situation. Um, this is how I choose to live my life for whatever reason. When a transsexual transitions, she undergoes a process of finding and unveiling and revealing her feminine essence or a womanliness that she wants to project. I miss my boyfriend. I'm going out with this guy, um, uh, this really like sweet, uh, smart, good-looking guy. And uh, what's really like exceptional about him that struck me right away was that he was never embarrassed that he was going out with a transsexual. Do you think he'd take you home? Yeah, totally. To meet, to meet his family? Totally, totally. That's Sorry. all you want. I know. That's well, awesome. that's not all I want, but it's a good start. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. You want other things. His body. His body, <laughs> yeah. I want to get fucked every day. Oh my you know? god. <laughs> How long is he going to come for? Um, He's going to come by and visit intermittently until he moves here, so that'll be cool. I have to clean this apartment before Mike gets here, too, or else he's not staying over. He's like a neat freak. Is he going to stay with you? If I clean my apartment, he will stay with me. Will he help you clean your apartment, though? Um, he said I should have it cleaned by the time he gets here. <laughs> I don't think I could find a cleaning lady who would actually do this. So, so what about Swabek? Um, well, he's still in jail. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend Swabek's in jail right now. He's in for another two months, good behavior. We had a fight in my car and uh, I called the cops and they took him away for assault, for assaulting me. I told Swavik I had a, a boyfriend now and I seen this other guy. And you know what the first thing Swavik said? Uh, he goes, so like, is his piece bigger than mine? <laughs> I've always wanted Swavik to think of me as no matter 
how low he was in his life or what, where he was at that moment that there was, would be one person in the world that still loved him. A lot of people think that's pretty screwed up, but um, can't help it. <laughs> still love him. Is it bigger? No. <laughs> I, no, no. You know. <laughs> I think I've had a lot of relationships based on how the sex was and how I could live out like stereotypical like porno versions of like female sexuality based on what that guy liked and what I wanted to perform at the time. It's like from there to like there. That's how big Suffolk's dick is when it's hard. Jesus. I know. I got this whole, um, not just like sexual pleasure out of it, but like a psychosexual pleasure. Like I felt like I was playing out a drama um, to get a certain psychological fulfillment out of it. But I don't think that's, none of those relationships ever led to intimacy and I, I don't know if they can. I went out with him for a year and a half. He only fucked me one time. Swelled it? Yeah. I couldn't take it. Yeah. He's not sort of a really sort of gentle guy either, you know? Spit and push. He yeah, has spit. He's sort of a spit. He comes from the spit and push school of fucking ass. I do want to start having relationships that are based on intimacy and having things in common. So what if, they, what if you find yourself like in the same room with both of them? Would you? Then they must fight. <laughs> <laughs> Two men they enter. They must fight. Two men enter, one man leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd um, <laughs> No, I'll stand by my boyfriend. I'll stand by Mike. Oh, Mike just called. Oh, Mike's not coming. Hello? What's going on? It's... It's no big deal. It's one less day we have to hang out together. I'm not trying to be shady, but I just hope this isn't going to turn into, like, your unreliable friends going, Oh, just one more day, and I just want it. Now I can't. Oh, I can't leave for two days. And do you know what I mean? Then it's going to be all fucked up again. Four in the morning tonight, you're going to leave. All right. I don't know. I guess I have to find another date tonight. So. Well, because I was all horny, I was like getting ready for you to come here. So now, you know, I have to call someone else. Okay? <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow in that case. And you'll be here at a more reasonable time. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. What woman hasn't dreamed of getting her man hard and freezing his cock in place with a huge Botox injection? Well, ladies, this is the next best thing, and it can be yours if you contact Wow Ladies. I appear regularly on Locker Room, Pride Vision's gay sports show. Thing two, take one. And then I'm Pride Vision's regular Sunday night hostess. You're just on yeah, fire. <laughs> I just completed a... Uh, Canadian indie feature film, a horror film. And I'm sort of on a roll. What? Oh my god, we had fun the other night. That was fun. It was crazy on Young Street. This is my boyfriend, Mike. Oh, hi, how are you? Good. He's meeting everyone good. tonight. <laughs> That's cool. He's from out of town. Oh. Sometimes when I'm with Mike, I forget that he's straight. I feel, I feel like he's gay. But he does all things that um, a lot of my gay friends do. Hey, hey. Wow. It's the you Red Rooster. My friend, eh? <laughs> yeah, we just saw each other on the street. Come on. Hi, love. This is like, the, I feel like you guys are all dressed up. And I'm like, oh, Mike oh, wanted no. to dress up. He's like, always just looks put together like a gay guy. Like, he could pass for gay very easily. You look cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's my biggest fear that he'll move to town and become a stripper. 
because he loves his body and he loves people looking at his body and you know and he likes to party and he wants to work very few hours and make lots of money and he wants to have sex with transies would you ever strip no never you said last night you would do it you just said yeah, for a hundred grand a month yeah no you well that's that an expensive <laughs> you better pull out some propellers or something it's like a lot of money for me to do that <laughs> i'm gonna host this party a little bit yeah, so thanks a lot guys for coming out. Hopefully we'll get this rock and running again too when the new season starts everything. Thanks, enjoy the show. This is Locker Room. Locker Room. Coming up. Wow, ladies, meet Linda. Point. And now the founding member of Wow <laughs> Ladies. Hey there, my name's Linda of Wow Ladies. And Wow Ladies, like myself, think that those underweight blonde bitches have been the male sexual fantasy of our culture for far too long. Yeah, that's right. Wow Ladies, like myself, are the new femininity. And men are gonna learn to love it whether they like it or not. Men love a woman who keeps a clean house. After dinner, I will mop, clean, scrub, buff, shine before that blonde bitch even gets her finger out of her throat. Wow, ladies. Ever notice how many men love breast implants? Ever notice how many female bodybuilders got them? That's right, boys, hard as a rock. So what if people thought I was a cross-dresser before I got them? You know, a man doesn't like a woman who's too loose down there. Well, after years of weight training and calisthenics, I'm tighter than the average house cat. Who cares if I can't lubricate? Please, somebody call. Like in the next few weeks, I was gonna go to Montreal to talk to a doctor there about um, having a consultation for a sex change. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to do that? Well, um, I haven't decided I'm having it, but I'm just going to consult. Okay. Do you know? Can you get some more information about it? Yeah, find out a little bit more about it. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I support you on it, that's for sure. Do you? On camera, he was like, oh, well, that's okay. Well, that's not the reason why I like you anyways. And do you know what I mean? I support you, and you're going to have to figure out what you want to do and stuff. But Sounds the nice. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You won't feel like I won't be like a special type of girl anymore, will you? No. You do it's think? Fine. Totally. As soon as we got home, he was like very angry with that. He was very frustrated with that. And, you know, he was just saying things like, what's the point of him like investing in a relationship with a transy if she's gonna have a sex change? He might as well just go out with a real girl. It's something you gotta do, I guess. Right? Yes. No? Well, maybe he's in transition. What do you mean? Well, maybe he's gay and not figured it out yet. Well, I don't want to think about that. Why not? I just don't think that's the case. I just don't think he's gay and has... I just think he likes trans, transsexuals. Okay. But I just think he... The thing he likes about transsexuals is he likes women with dicks. He was like, why would you want to get rid of that? That's the best part about you. But this is always a possibility, like, oh, right? Oh, God. I thought that uh, if I got a sex change, then I would never have to worry about going out with guys who only like me because I was a trainee. I never have to worry about guys only like me because I had a dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we discussed it, but that has nothing to do with it, though. I know. Yeah. The first day I met him, he was like, interested in me and I was so I was like well have, have you ever dated you know I'm a transsexual right have you, have you ever dated transsexuals before and he was like no but I've always wanted to and it's like a thing for me and you understand I'm a little different than 
those Thin people. regular guys, right. Into trannies. Right. He spent all his money, he left all his stuff at my place, and he doesn't even have enough money to get back to Thunder Bay. He's trapped here, and he's living with some gay guy who wants to have sex with him, and wandering around the streets like in Like I said, maybe he's in transition. Wouldn't you feel weird, though, if I had a pussy <laughs> and I was like, wanted you to fuck my surgically created pussy? <laughs> Wouldn't you feel weird about that? Wouldn't you be like, I don't know. I will have to see when What would you be there. thinking when you put... Do you know what I mean? Uh, I don't think it would make much of a difference. <laughs> an emotional memory. For sure. For sure. Whatever, he acts like a Dude, faggot anyway. <laughs> the worst type of faggot. That's what I think. Watch out, watch out. You know? Oh. Did you almost get run over? <laughs> and I'm still on the sidewalk. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you wash that man right out of your hair. Yeah, he's gone. Send him on his way back to Thunder Bay. Totally. Have a kiss. I was in school for a long time. I have two master's degrees. One of my, my first master's is from the University of Cape Town in South Africa. It's a grad degree in uh, theater directing. I'm not riding your ass, I'm just saying it's a priority. My second master's degree is an MFA from York University in playwriting. So looks great. I was TAing and I was teaching students at York University and I transitioned right in front of them. Call me tomorrow, I'll tell you all about it. Bye. We're going down to this uh, neo-Nazi skinhead rock concert slash rally. And there's gonna be a group of uh, anti-hate crime people, anti-racist, anti-homophobia people there, and they're gonna try and like close down the concert and stuff. And I'm just gonna cover the event for Fab Magazine. So my thing is today I'm supposed to get as many photos as possible of like hot skinhead guys <laughs> and me in the photo, like with my arm around them and stuff. Oh like, my god. Yeah. That's cool. We're gonna just sort of weigh out the danger quotient a little bit. Oh, it's at the hotel. We're gonna walk around by ourselves. Yes. Oh yeah, but you might get beat up. Oh, sorry, I won't get beat up. Wow, let's go get pictures with those cops. Would you guys do an interview with for Fab Magazine? It's a downtown urban magazine. No, you show it to your chest. Why? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you last, please clear off the road, let the car through, okay? Yeah, actually, I'm here to provoke anything with that. Those neo Nazis said they like my tits. He was like, nice tits, where's your bra? Got a big dick for you, two boys. I have to get a photo with the skinhead at some point today. Let's ask these girls. Hey, girls. Do you girls see any Nazis? <laughs> Did the cops tell you guys to go away? Oh, uh, yeah. If you don't go at some point, we'll have to arrest you, okay? Okay, I'll go. At least I get laid. <laughs> at least it break this dry spell. Can I take your name? I'll give you my card. How is that? Oh, awesome. That's well, what I was going to ask with me, I'll give you my card. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Hope you got my good side. <laughs> Do you have a bad side? No one knows. But I just don't think the event's going to happen. I think it's... I think the event has been totally subverted. Yeah, but I think that the article could be about... Um, like erotic fascist figures, who's hotter, cops or skinheads? That's my ex lover <laughs> when I was a boy. I haven't seen him in like 10 years. Oh my God. Hi, how are you? <laughs> you know who I am. It's not Rod. Yeah, it is. Shut up. It is, yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you recognized me. No, I didn't. Oh, why'd you say hi to me then? Just being polite. Oh my god. Oh, I thought you were. Oh, told totally you went to the change. I didn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Let me get out of the car. Hi, Rock. Oh my god. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Now I recognize the voice. Yeah, of course. Oh my god. What's your female Nina. name? Nina. Nina. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. 
How's oh it going? Oh my god. You look amazing. Thank you. Do you have it done here? Well, I didn't actually have a, a sex change. I haven't had a sex change. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I still have a dick. Do you know? She met. Yeah, I'm like yeah. a female. Yeah. Did you ever know me to mention it when I was a boy? Like, that I mentioned that I was wanted to be a trainee? I, or in hindsight, like I think you've mentioned it once and sort of laughed it off because you weren't sure about the reaction. Oh, really? What did yeah. I say? I don't remember that. I know. You said, what do you think about me being a girl? And uh, you talked to your... Uh, can I say this on TV? Yeah, you can say it. Your private part. I tucked my dick behind... <laughs> behind your, your legs and made it look like a female part. Right. Yeah. Wow. But we like hung I mean, out with trannies. We had this. So yeah. We were hanging out with a lot of trannies yeah, back then. Yeah. Well, drag queens. You were hanging drag out queens. with trannies and drag, drag queens. queens. Yeah. Because yeah. you're. I don't want to be a woman though. I'm. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. You look great. You Thank look you. Really good. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Where do you go to? Where do you go? I like straight clubs. Yeah. Comfort zone and the. Do you ever get picked up? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what I do you do. do when they get to your place? I don't know. Fool around. <laughs> they don't. What if they don't discover your voice? Well, I tell them beforehand. Do you know what I mean? What kind of reactions do you get? Like, well, sometimes guys are, are not interested. Sometimes they're just like, well, just give me a blowjob, or you know. Sometimes they're intrigued, or sometimes they know I'm a tranny when they're, they're picking me up. They yeah. they know what I am. Yeah. So, but they still want it. Do you ever get bashed or harassed or no? No, never. No? No. So I've been lucky. Straight bars? Yeah. No? Yeah, I know. So. You look been, amazing. Thank you. He was never like someone that I had a great love affair with, but I remember I was like desperate to have sex with him. Like I thought he was like the hottest thing ever. <laughs> that is it's so... freaky to run into him now, like 10 years later. And that he totally didn't recognize you at all. What's our agenda for tonight? Um, our agenda for tonight, oh my God. I'm hungry for men. <laughs> um, our agenda for tonight is going to be, um, oh God, I can't, I, I don't even know what our agenda for tonight is because we've been partying for so fucking long now. Well, yeah. um, do you know, it's like, comfort zone well, it's was Sunday, you know, last night. Will be out. We'll be man ears. We only come out at night, <laughs> lean and hungry tight. Girl, we're going to a gay bar. I have a home. Well, you never know, because you know what? There's some, like, lost souls that would wander in there. Look what happened two weeks ago. Right. Oh, right. What I have seen is guys who've come up to me in clubs, and they've always wanted to do it with a transsexual, and they've never met one before, and all of a sudden, tonight they met one, and they're going to grab that experience, and immediately it goes into, if we have sex tonight, like, I want to do it like this, and I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> we haven't slept yet. How's everybody doing? We're okay. Right. We're doing good. Are you tired yet? No. How are you? Hi. We haven't slept yet. Hi. Hey, guys. Are you? you know what I mean? It's like, okay, cool, I get it. You got this kink for trannies and but it's just like calm down like you know tonight's not the only time like you can ever like meet a girl like me all right there's three guys that i slept with here and what is the normal training? I think there's lots of guys, lots of types of men who are interested in transsexuals, in, in my experience. One of the guys that I slept with, or I sucked his cock, but I wouldn't let him go down my pants. <laughs> he asked Gabby if I was a transsexual. One of the types of guys is um, otherwise heterosexual men who've developed a fetish for penises. I meet guys like that sometimes, and it's like they're really intense about my dick. Like, well, how big's your dick? Does your dick get hard? Oh, do you have like pubic hair? Like, oh, do you have big balls? Are you cut or uncut? And I try and stay away from those men at all costs. Three weeks ago, Nina and I frequent a club called Comfort Zone. And um, a bodybuilder had approached me and I was like, no, no, no. Cause I'm the shy, quiet one, supposedly. And kind of brushed him off. 
And then he came up to us last night at Systems, so I kind of flirted. And I kind of left out the fact that I was a transsexual. And then there's like another type of guy who likes transsexuals that wants you to have a dick, but he never wants to see it or never really wants to look at it or touch it too much or anything like that. And I guess they get off on just knowing that it's there. I don't claim to understand those guys that much. I was gonna tell him, but I just didn't have, it was kind of an awkward, like how often do you bring up, oh hi, I have a penis, kind of in a conversation. So. Totally. Then I've also gone out with like heterosexual men who didn't know I was a transsexual when they first met me and who sort of became curious about it or were sort of confused about it, but somehow still interested or, or just guys who just liked me. Do you know what I mean? That they liked me and um, wanted me to have a sex change. I have to say, I more end up going out with guys like that because then I feel like I get treated like a regular girl or a real girl. So when are you gonna tell him? He's actually supposed to be calling tonight after our sessions and hanging out. Oh great, how are you gonna break it to him? I'm just gonna basically tell him I'm not your typical girl next door and I tend to have a penis. And we'll see how that goes and we'll take it from there, I guess. He's gonna so. freak out if you tell I don't know. That, though. I don't think he's gonna be too upset. You can tell which ones are gonna be a little bit more receptive to the idea. Right. Totally. And that's how I want to be treated, not as like a she male, like sex fantasy, this like woman with a dick with the sex drive of a man who, you know, can't fuck and get blown enough and loves to shoot like loads over guys' faces who lap it up. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and some guys like think that we're like that, do you know? Don't get me wrong, I know girls like that too. Do you know what I mean? But um, that's not certainly not the relationship I want. I don't get anyone that's gay or bisexual, straight only. Except for Right, Sven. and that was like me and Swavik. Yeah. Mm. That was like me and Swavik. Swavik wanted me. Swavik wanted me to have a sex change, and um, but Swavik was an asshole. <laughs> That's a big difference. Yeah, well, you always date assholes. <laughs> assholes with money. <laughs> yeah, my asshole's in jail. I think I first met Todd because he slept with one of my friends. Nina was my frosh boss <laughs> at university. I was still living as a guy, but I remember Todd um, would tell these stories about how he hung out with she males. I didn't know that he had any like specific transsexual urges. He doesn't see me regularly, so it's like he really has experienced the changes I've made in my face and my body. She's a work of art. <laughs> That's what I have inside, yeah, right there. Right there. Hey, Todd Klink's here. What's the timing? Hey, guys. I know, I'm getting a lift reduction. A reduction? Yeah. Wow, okay, cool. I just feel like it's too pumped in the center there. This is so weird, because I didn't realize we have all these connections that, in a way, are so um, milestones in my life anyways. Because when I wanted to go on internet porn, remember I called you and said, Todd, I want to be on the internet. Can I come over and talk to you about it? I remember giving you some guidance at some point. But... And now I'm just like, okay. oh my god, I'm so childish. Who cares? Well, no, that was, like, ideas... that was like a passing of... I mean, it, it was totally you needed like the information. I mean. Yeah, but also too, I was like nervous about doing it and stuff. And now I would, just, the person I am today, I just think, oh, who cares? Yeah. Like if there's like some sex stuff going on on the internet. Yeah. Do you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have like certain professional ties as well, like Mitchell Rafel, who's the editor of Fab Magazine and stuff. Todd knows him and. We share certain things in common, like an obsession with sex and she males and sexuality and, you know, beauty. <clears throat> Are you ready? Yeah. Have you seen this, like, have you seen this? I've seen it one time, yeah. Uh, my name is Nina Arsenault. I'm 24 years old. 
I was born Rodney Bernard Arsenault, and I've taken the first steps towards this exchange. Does it go all the way till now? This video, or my how, face how is surgery? pretty similar, but yeah. it's not quite. I've had a few, I've had a few, few other like procedures. Two <laughs> Back in 1998, I had my first surgery, like the first of my surgeries that I did to feminize myself. And the first thing I did was I had a nose job. I had already had a nose job at this point too. Really? And still, look how big my nose was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's lots more. Oh, why did they put that in there? It's so embarrassing. No, but... <sighs> well, a lot of people stare when they look at me, but maybe it's because they're not used to seeing someone who looks like me. But, like, after, after someone gives me, like, a hostile stare, and if I match that, then their option is to sort of take it up a level or back down, right? And to take it up a level from that usually means violence, and most people aren't prepared to do that. So. Is that your own hair? Yeah. She's like, is that your real hair? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it looks so fake. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going in to see Dr. Middleton. No cheeks. And hey, look at the chin. There, it's like a radical nose job. And I'm having an aggressive chin reduction. And look at my ears, how much they stuck out before I had them tugged. <laughs> that is fucked up. I had my chin reduced. Um, I had my uh, brow bone shaved. And I had uh, cheek implants put in, like silicone, like hard silicone cheek implants. And I had my eyebrows lifted, because women have higher eyebrows than men. So how do you feel? I feel very positive. Good. Tired? That's what shocked me when I saw you the time you came with Tasha. Like, when I was, like, overwhelmed by the, how much it had changed, I was like... Oh, what, did, what is that that you noticed again? The whole, it was structure. It was just, yeah. I, I, saw, I hadn't seen you up close for years, and it was like, I hadn't even realized that that could be done. Usually just for, for today. I was much more comfortable with myself, but I still wanted to look more feminine. I spent $100,000 on cosmetic surgery in the last, say, two years. I don't want to have any facial hair, and I want to have my hair filled in here, where it's receded, and yeah, I have to do that before breasts, otherwise it's too awkward. And lips, of course, big lips. <laughs> but, and that's um, what we're doing today. That's what we're doing today, yeah. I had no lips at all, like no like red part on my lips. So what I had done is I had my lips incised around the lip line where the red part of the lip meets the white part of the lip, and they pulled the inside of my lip out to the outside of my mouth. I was afraid he'd do my lips and wouldn't make them big enough. So I was like, take them to the point where you think they look good, then go further, and then go way further than right. after that, and then that's what I want. Goodbye the lips. Bye lips. Did he do it? Yeah, I thought he did a pretty good job. I think I wouldn't want my lips to be any bigger than this. Yeah. Ew, gross. I love watching it a little. Ew. It's so harsh. <laughs> yeah, they're they're amazing. Look at that. Lipstick even. Yeah. <laughs> they're amazing. Look at how big they were at first. They're huge. <laughs> and you know when I woke up when I saw them happy, like that? Right? I was like, like he made them big enough. Yeah. Good for <laughs> I had my jaw shaved. I had my Adam's apple shaved, and I had my nose done a third time. Every tranny I know whose nose looks good has had at least three nose jobs. Do you know? I had my breast done, obviously. I had my breast done in Guadalajara, Mexico because I wanted to get silicone breast implants above the muscle, which weren't available in North America at the time. And I simultaneously had my lower ribs done as well. The bottom two or three ribs were broken and pushed inwards into the body. And 
Um, I had to be bound and wear like a surgical corset. And I had silicone injected in my lips and I had silicone injected in my hips and in my ass just to have more fullness down there. There's a whole underground silicone trade amongst transsexuals that we hear about through word of mouth. And it's very dangerous because a lot of girls get injected with stuff that isn't good for them or that turns hard or um, causes them a lot of problems later in life or moves around to different parts in their bodies. So there's a lot of scammers out there. So if you're thinking about getting silicone injections, watch out. You, you have to be really careful. Oh, I love silicone. <laughs> I had a little bit of silicone pumped right there and there. Because when I had my cheek... That's what I'm noticing about the silicone, eh? Like, everyone's like just like... A little bit here, a little bit there. Like, it's like a putty thing, right? It's yeah, like a molding. Yeah, anything with it. That's yeah. so great about it. And I might just get a little bit more right there. Um, I think I'm finished with all my surgeries now because I think it's important for me just to appreciate what I've done for myself. And it's important for me to not fixate about masculine features I might still have. I just have to get over it and move on with my life. We're here to party and have fun and celebrate that all my surgeries are finished. I feel so much more like powerful and ready to meet people. If I didn't go on this journey, if I didn't go from being a man to living as a woman right now, I'd be dead. Ronnie would be, like, suicidal. Like, I really think this is something I had to do or die. Cool. Is that weird? It's totally weird. It's totally weird. Just the way they sort of cut it and stuff, like, it'd be like, that, I'd be like, wow, I have so much trouble, though, still accepting the way I look. Do you know what I mean? But the way they ended it there, it almost felt like, and now Nina has, like, no more body image issues. She's, like, complete. <laughs> Do you know? And I'd be like, God, oh, oh. it feels, like, so not that case. It feels like an ongoing battle. You're still, at least two. Are you still, yeah. I want to just finish up with my silicone injections this summer. I want to get a little bit more cheeks up here in my face and a little bit more cheeks in my ass. And, oh, I want to go see um, Dr. Broussard this, this summer about um, uh, a sex change. He's a sex change doctor in Montreal. And I'll just go and I'll just talk to him about it, though. I want to consult and maybe know some things about it more firsthand. I think because I was in the sex industry for like two years on the internet, it, I had no idea I would be able to articulate what gave me pleasure so well by the end of that job. Because it's like I was dealing with a number of fantasies every day, um, like a hundred fantasies every day. And it's like, you realize I'm faking this. Do you know what I mean? But it's like every once in a while someone comes on, you realize, I'm not faking this. This is really turning me on. I want you to call me dirty names and sort of degrade me in certain ways. Would you ever get really hurtful? You can slap me around a little bit, right? Would you ever spit on me, like, you know, while we were doing it? I could never stay with a guy for 20 years unless he slapped me around while he fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> in that way if you're good I don't need to do anything but if you fuck up I'll have that on you already I, I don't want to give up my restraining order Slava gets out of jail in probably two weeks and not to sound like a textbook but it just seems so comfortable to have him around again I'm taking a uh this letter to Swalek's parole officer, so he's allowed to see me. I mean, I love Swalek, 
But I have very little confidence that when Swavik gets out of jail, he'll stay off drugs. Swavik's awesome when he's sober, but as soon as he gets on drugs, and he does some weird drugs, he starts, do you know what I mean? Then he gets violent and mood swings and stuff like that. He would come to my door, like, begging for help, and he was hurting, or all this nonsense. And then as soon as I would open the door, he would, like, attack me. You don't really have much idea how long she... I have no clue. No clue. Right? That's fine. Will you make sure she gets a letter? Thank you. The horror stories that I tell about Swavik are, like, few and far between. Like, there was, like, really amazing, do you know what I mean, couple months in between every one of them. Like, it was our thing to, like, go to cottages. So Swavik and I went camping, and it's like, and we'd, like, swim in the lake or sleep in a car or, do you know what I mean? Like, we'd, like, get some, like, $20 tent from Canadian Tire and go camp out. So when Swavik was sober, he was great. And it made me realize, you know, when I put up with a whole bunch of bullshit from Swavik, it wasn't because I was, like, dependent on him or... It wasn't because I was a loser. It's because there was just really great stuff about him. Oh my God, these flowers are gorgeous. Look at them. I think I could continually go back to Swavik and he could continually be getting screwed up and I could spend the next 10 years, you know, in a relationship where, you know what I mean? He's like on and off drugs or violent and, you know, in and out of jail and have nothing to show for it at the end of 10 years. I could totally see that happening. <clears throat> There's no message from him. I've seen girls on hormones do some crazy fucked up things, like, you know, mood swing, like, violently and hit people and, you know, so it's like you can't really do drugs or drink too much if you're on hormones because you're already uh, emotional. I'm gonna take some hormones and then I'm gonna relax. They make you feel more depressed, more insecure, less ambitious, less inspired, more mood swings. My doctor says, well, Nina, you know, hormones don't really change the way you look too much. It's more to sort of make you feel like a woman inside. That's a very dangerous statement. <laughs> There is a nervous part of me that says, like, what are you doing, Nina? Like, why are you going to, like, pick this guy up who, do you know what I mean, like, assaulted you and threatened you? Why, why are you doing that? Anyway, I told you I was going to start. She understand? I don't really feel like, <laughs> so the only reason I like Slav is because he's like a big rough guy and I like rough boys and he went, he's so rough that he went to jail. But I guess I also feel like of all the guys like I've ever dated is Swaff was always the only one who wasn't boring. Maybe he's inside, I guess. I feel, I'm nervous that he'll be drunk when we get there. That's what makes me the most scared, that he'll actually have started drinking or something. Oh, yeah, that's him. Hey. <laughs> you, you look horrible. What do you mean I look horrible? Look horrible. I just got out of jail. What the fuck yeah. am I supposed to look like? Oh, my God. I've never seen you that big before. Why? You look huge. Put uh, some weight on. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stand up. Why? I don't know. It's a little shaky. Just walk in. Well, we can get you something to eat. Yeah, let's get out of here. Too many cops are on here, you know? Nice to see your nympho, as always. I'm not 
not really interested in anything that I don't see in the average heterosexual porno. Those aren't S&M videos, they're just like straight sex videos, but they still have like degradation and abuse and, uh, you know, certain physical pain or things that are just like a part of like heterosex. Okay, I'm gonna stick my hand in there. I like getting called dirty names and being like slapped around when I fool around because I mean, if I'm gonna go like really intensely into it, I think I gender myself that way. See, when I met See, Nina the first night, <laughs> she was quite a slut. Oh, I've known God. her for about two minutes. I already had my finger in her ass. <laughs> and then I grabbed her by the hair. I think I have this like sort of stereotypical view that I developed when I was like five years old that like, uh, that's what like men really do when they really think like a woman is like hot. I sometimes wonder why, because I think, well, I had a really healthy childhood. How did I turn out like that? Well, uh, Nino's got a pretty busy sex life. <laughs> Anything you want to tell them about it? Mm, best blowjob I ever got. <laughs> I'll admit that. I love it when you tell people that. Since going on hormones, I don't have as many physical sensations like in my dick that like a regular guy would. When those things started changing, I did notice that that's when the type of sex I was starting to have was starting to change. My brother even gave you two thumbs up. Well, I should say what three did, thumbs up, right? What did your brother say about it? Give you three thumbs up. If you know what I mean, where the third one's coming from, right? Yeah. I wanted to like enter, in, enter into like a, a psychological arena where things would become a, intense or feral or um, that that would be the thrill of sex. Everybody loves trannies now. I wonder what's next. Guys who've been in jail. Since being on hormones, I'm a hell of a lot kinkier, but I also have much more interesting sex. And I do sort of end up having the sex that I wanted to have before, but without like a premature ejaculation. <laughs> so were you worried I might do something to you today? I was worried you might be drunk when I got here or on your first drink or... Across my mind. <clears throat> Think about it too seriously. Mm -hmm. I just got out of jail, you know. I don't want to go back in. So does my face look different? Mm hmm Butter. Everything looks butter. Cool. Oh, wow. Tits look bigger because of the smaller waist, you know. Yeah. Oh. It's so nice to be out. <laughs> she got no more restraining order. It's good, too. I can put it back whenever I want to, they said. Did you put your cigarette in? Yeah, let's get some hair. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's much better. Sure. Mm -hmm. Off with that mop. Yeah. Now you need some sun. Oh, not that white? Yeah, you need some sun. Yeah, yeah some. Mm -hmm. Oh, we usually had a great time, you know? She's pretty adventurous, do things, right? Good company, you know, good sex, can't complain. There's a little bit of arguments, I guess, from time to time. Hormonal rage, you know, women get PMS, she gets hormone rage. How's the water? Cool. Nice, though. I would prefer if she got a sex change. You know, three holes are better than two. Let's go down there. I want to go to that thing. I'd support her if she got it or not, but I would prefer if she did get it. You know, just complete the full transition. See, he's stripping down to his underwear. You can do it. I got jail boxers, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm pale as a ghost. I'm not stripping down here. <laughs> I like Nina, I like the transies, but I like women too, right? I don't like men for the record, right? Just trannies and women, right? I mean, I hope to get married one day, you know, have kids. And, you know, she was always cool with that, right? She always told me, just don't sleep around with other trannies on me, that's all, right? And I guess, you know, it's a pretty good arrangement. 
Well, you're out. Yeah, you're out of jail. New beginning. That's a new beginning. So let's be nice, so, eh? I'm always nice no, to you. Not. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's go back to shitty old Toronto. Does anybody ask about me? Um, I guess so. Who? Oh. Well, fuck, who? Oh, come on. Well, what do you want to know? I like, what, know. one of my friends you mean? I want to know if anybody know? still cares out there. Um, well, it's like a lot of my friends don't even know about you. Like, my new friends. It's like Kylie. Well, you new found friends. You change your friends, eh? A lot. I noticed that about you. It's like, don't need them anymore. I can afford it. Disposable keep... friends, eh? No. Why can't I dispose of you? You've been around for two years now. Well, you can't get rid of me that easy. Come on, you love it. That abuse makes you feel real. You told me so yourself. Oh, God. <laughs> I never said that. Yeah, you did. I like to get a little rough, you know, and bad. Definitely. And Nina likes that, you know? She's almost the things she likes are kind of weird, you know? But... As long as it ain't me getting handcuffed, you know, I can deal with it. Hey, let's switch seats so I can uh, be by the ashtray. Okay. So move that little ice of yours. Oh, Nina, you dirty fucking, I don't know, what's the word for you? I don't know. That's what I like a boy, because you're a lady in company and a super whore in bed. Honestly, though, what? Honestly, though, speaking 100% honestly, yeah. what's the dirtiest thing we've ever done together, in your opinion? She likes, you know, calling me names. I like that, you know. I don't do things to her in the shower and stuff. I don't know if I should be saying that on camera, but... What haven't I done to you? Pretty much everything. Except for that one thing. What's the one thing? Well, you know that one thing. The only hot dog I eat is the kind that comes in the fucking bun with oh. fucking mustard and ketchup. I you know. know. Okay, fine. You made your fucking point. Having sex with her is like being in the twilight zone. Just get to have a titty in your hand. Does it still feel good? Oh, yeah. It feels athletic. What? Shut up. Can't believe I'm back in TL. I don't know if Swavik loves me. Um, he says he does. I believe him. I, I feel like I can trust it. But I think what love is to, means to me and what love means to him are two different things. He doesn't have trouble being sober if he's with me the whole time. Then he's stimulated and, you know, we find stuff to do. The urge to, like, go to a bar or, get some drugs, it's like when he's alone. I'm sure that'll be okay for a weekend. It'll probably be lots of fun. Then he's gotta go to the halfway house. I like Swavik, but I feel like as soon as he's around, my life gets really shitty. Hello. What's up with Swavik? Was what? it like, oh, she wants him back. She loves the No, banana. I... <laughs> hey. When you went out with Swavik, uh -huh. was he ever sober? Because... Uh, no, never. Never. Only when he had to go to work, and that was a hangover situation. Police is still a fucking disaster. Well, you were supposed to clean today. Yeah, I know. Oh, fuck, you haven't been home, you know? The plan never was that I would get back together with Swavik. When he got out of jail, that was never the plan. Just that I would help him for a few days. He told me he used to put 
like vodka on his cereal when he was going out with you. Because okay, he would be like, that far. he would have. I don't think you ever right. <laughs> you are drunk or high. I can't figure out which. Neither. I don't believe you. Neither. Well, you want to do a cross examination too? Or? I, no, I just want to know where you've been and what you've been up to. I went to my uncle's yesterday for a barbecue. What about the crack? No. You told me on the phone you smoked some. What the fuck are you talking about? I, I can just hear it in your like, voice. Yeah, a smokable a quarter of weed. It gets a little rough, you know? Would you ever get back together with Swabe? No. No. It's from barbecue, hon. Let me see your other thumb. That looks like from a pipe, Swabe. It's from a fucking barbecue. Call my uncle right now. Jesus. We were drunk, you know, trying to start it. And you have two burns right there, right where the pipe where? burn. There's one right there too. Just tell me if you were on the no, pipe. No, for and fuck's sake! I'll just... have a barbecue now. Fuck, leave it alone. Jesus. I'm just saying, if you did it, just tell me about it. I didn't it, do it. And then I'll freak out and get over it. I didn't and then do we'll it. Move on. I didn't do it. Okay. So let's move on. It sort of seems like I'm more interested in helping him sort his life out than he is interested in it, so, you know, that's pretty stupid. There's no point crying over spilled milk. Let's go. Where are we going go. to, Envy? We're going to Envy. Right? Let's go find some real man, girl. Some he does have a real man. I saw this thing on TV when I was growing up. I was like 16 years old, I think. Um, about Gay Pride Day was going to happen in Toronto. I saw it on the news. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go to that, to Gay Pride Day and meet other gay people. And I figured there'd be like, I don't know, like 300 people there. <laughs> and when it turned out that there was like hundreds of thousands of people, like I was in shock. I'm really looking forward to Pride Weekend this year, but I'm not going to have a second of free time. It's a tribute to fairies, fags, and hags. <laughs> I'm producing um, three of the main shows for Unified Weekend, which is a series of parties that happens over Pride Weekend. Along with producing these three shows, I'm doing a special for Pride Vision TV about Pride Day. It's going to be wild. Starting on Friday, I've got to be at the CNE grounds in the uh, National Trade Center. And that's where our big party on the Saturday night is happening. Here they come! Last year, I did the show as well. And it was funny talking to the crew at the beginning of the day. It was like me and 100 guys in the room. I think I was the only female. And then as sort of a couple hours rolled on, I think they started to figure out that I was a transsexual. And there was this sort of murky time there. But by the end of the day, those guys were coming to me with the problems Ooh, they couldn't God, solve. You look great. Um, Jonathan, the place is really filling up out there really quick, so we'll probably aim for 12.30. I loved how that day turned around and I had the, those guys' respect at the end of the day. And it's a credit to me, because I was organized, but it's also a credit to those guys, because they were just awesome. Cool. So. If I can get all the performers and running crew over here. Now when I see them this year, they're like, Nina, how's it going? Yay, Nina, keep us on track. Nina, got your boobs done. You look great. It's like wall-to-wall -wall people in there. It's a great crowd. And I don't want to get cheesy, but I know the show is going to be hot tonight. And I know it's going to blow people away. I know no one's expecting a show like we've put together. So let's kick ass. <laughs> As producer, I want to come in and make sure it's clean, make sure it's slick, make sure it has a beginning, middle, and end, make sure it's lit in such a way that it's going to capitalize on their work, and take care of all those sort of minute performance details that mean so much um, in making the production look professional. Go! Because people are paying like $350 to go to these parties, so they have to see like, good quality shows. We worked it out. So good. I just, I would... You hear that scream? All right, everyone. 
Great. All this week, I've taken hyper good care of myself. I've been in bed by like 10 p.m. every night. Do you know what I mean? Eating good, I'm on a healthy diet, getting lots of sleep, not being distracted by boys. Do you know? It's like, once I cut boys and sex out of my life, I have so much energy for all this great stuff. Sunday is when I'm hosting the Pride Vision, Pride, Toronto Pride Day TV special. The parade starts at 1 p.m. and we've got to be able to cover the beginning of the parade. Thanks. I'll probably get about four hours sleep before I have to start getting camera ready and go into a production meeting at 11 a.m. You're very blend today. You're very fish. Yeah. How's it going? Well, we're trying to thread this. We're trying to do crap. Cool. I won't bother you too much because you're busy. I just want to give you a kiss. Thank you. Say happy Pride I'll Day. Have a nice I'll see day. you around today, though. Okay. Bye. Okay. Ciao. Starting right now, the main event of Toronto's Pride Weekend just beginning right behind me. I always sort of forget that Pride Day is for transies too. I always think of it as <laughs> Gay and Lesbian Pride Day. And I love that there's a whole weekend where everyone can ce celebrate their sexuality and hopefully their gender too. Hot is on Pride Day. What a fabulous day. What a great day. It's a little bit longer to get going than we'd hope, but it's great. As soon as the parade's over, it's like I've got a crew call. Um, at the government uh, space, the cool house. And that's where uh, that show is. And I go immediately into sound check, lighting check, rehearsals with performers on the space. But I have a great team, so I'm not even stressed about it. <laughs> well, everybody loves everybody we've got. They recognize some of our stars like you, of Thank course. Thank you very much. All right, Pride keeps getting better and better for Pride Vision TV. Thank you, good stuff. Let's go back okay, right to the here. float right now. Sunday night show has always been a bit of a disaster because by Sunday, most of the people have been partying so intensely that they're so sketched out by Sunday that they can't remember choreography, they're not on time, the work isn't clean, and they just don't have the energy to like give the show the intensity that it needs. We've a great crew this year on the Sunday night show. They're professional dancers, a lot of like straight dancers who aren't really gonna be partying that much at Pride Weekend, as well as some gay guys who we know we can really totally rely on. That's not really going there, is it? In a way, I think pulling together the Sunday night show and how I've strategized to do that on a shoestring budget, but really give like a top dollar product is one of the things I'm proudest about. Alex, how do you feel about this? Okay, let me ask them if they can put it lower. Okay. I'll get to party like about 3 a.m. on Sunday night, Monday morning. That's when I'll, all my work will be finished. I've actually got plans to have sex with one of the performers after the show. Not until the show's over and I'm no longer his boss, though. Hi, Terry, it's Nina. I'm at the government right now. I'm concerned because um, I was expecting you at 10 p.m. I'm looking at the clock now, and it is, it's 11 o'clock. My dress broke, like, two minutes ago. Jasmine, did you by chance bring a spare dress, did you? Uh, yes, I did. The spare? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, this is what we don't have time for. Just, no, it's just one question. Uh, one question and that's it. It's the fun of it. It's fine. It's actually fine. Everything's fine. I just feel the most stressed about that. I look tired. My hair is fucked up. And my look isn't together. And I don't like to be public when my look's not together. No. No, you promised me you weren't going to do that. And I'm serious about it, OK? This show was going on on. No, hear me. I will listen to you if you listen to me. The show must happen on time tonight. Okay, cool. I'll, I will, I, I'll hear what you wanted to say to me. Can I ask you a question? Yes. <laughs> Do you have a minute for me? One minute. I'm okay. sure everyone in that room is like totally reasonable and totally fine. 
It's just that I'm on a very short fuse. Let's just hope they work. We're looking at 15 minutes till places. 15 minutes. You must be very proud of your own endeavors. I'm proud of my job at Pride Vision TV, and I'm proud that in the moment when I told my parents that I wanted to be a transsexual, that I had the strength to do that. I'm proud that when I go out clubbing, I, you know, go to straight clubs and I'm open about who I am, you know. I think I struggle with a lot of the same things that a lot of transgender people struggle with, but I'm proud that, um, like, I walk down the street during the daylight, which is something a lot of transsexuals don't do. There's these two guys that are hitting on me. They're, they're friends. And um, so they're like hitting on me and you know, all this stuff. Well, I want to take some time and get to know you. You seem really special and you seem really smart and all that stuff. So I was like, you know, well, if you do want to get to know me, then, you know, I've, I've got something you should know. Do you know? So I was like, you know, I'm a she male and I've got a dick and all this stuff. And so, I mean, of course, automatically the guy changes his tune from, um, I want to take some time and get to know you too. Wait a minute, you're a she-male, you got a dick? Oh, fuck, just give me a blowjob. Do you know what I mean? Like, automatically then he's just like, but his friend is like really interested. Like, really interested. And at first he doesn't believe it. He's like, he's like, you've got a dick? What do you mean, you got a dick? It's like so small, you're not even gonna see it if it's dark. You're not even gonna notice it. We're at his house, we're fooling around. Oh, fuck, I'm so horny. He takes his underwear off, and I realize, oh my god, my dick is bigger than his. I think he was really intimidated, and he never called me again until like three months later. I remember being five years old and telling my mom, Mom, I should have been a girl, and her being really confused by my saying that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> how are you? And I think I'd probably gone up to my mom at one point and said, well, Mom, maybe I'll just go, like, snip with the scissors, and, you know, then I'll be a girl. You'll have a daughter. That was a long time I ago. didn't bring many, just your school pictures, <clears throat> but do you remember the occasion of this, uh, yeah. of this one? Yeah. <laughs> this is a young, sporty kid. Look at that. That's almost the same haircut I have now. <laughs> With my hair behind one ear, but not behind the other. other. Just continuity. Look at, look at your eyes. They just look so bright. Yeah. <laughs> Postmodern sort of feminists are going to hate me for saying this, but I do feel like something happened in the womb. Look at this oh, yeah, that's what I... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I looked like in high school. You were in grade 12, and yeah. you were going to be going off to university, and... Uh, but we knew before that that, um, I guess, that something was bothering you. I think that, uh, something happened, and I... My brain developed as a female brain, or, um... There was a weird mix of hormones in the, in the womb, and my genitals and my brain or my chromosomes, they all ended up with different genders and stuff. I thought I was gay. I thought, because mm -hmm. I didn't know any gay people yeah. when we were growing up, and I always thought mm -hmm. every gay man wanted to be a woman. No. I used to think that, like, I yeah. saw something about yeah. gay people on TV, and I mm -hmm. thought, oh, that must be me. That's why I'm different. Yeah. Because I knew I was attracted to men. Yeah. But I just thought, oh, all gay people want to be women. But then I it's thought, not true. <laughs> yeah, then when I met gay people, I was like, oh, oh I'm not like them either. Yeah. And I remember telling you, you know, like, I, I thank you for being honest about it, that you didn't hide it or anything like that. You know, sometimes you're a little apprehensive about some of the things and you think, well, what the other people going to think? And then you think to yourself, oh, what the hell, who cares what they think, really? You know, it's, it's what well, you Well, I remember that was the first thing you told me. When I said, yeah, I want to have a sex change, you said, well, don't worry about what the neighbors are going to think, yep. and don't worry about what the family's going to think. Yep, we'll handle that. We'll just handle it, yeah. Yep. A lot of old-school uh, feminist academics 
I have a lot of really bad things to say about transsexuals and shemales. One of them is that we're not really women, that we are like men with like female constructed, surgically mutilated bodies. And, uh, <laughs> which, which is a pretty horrible thing to say. Remember the time that you went shopping with Nina? Christmas shopping? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess that was the first time that we, uh, that was the first, first time, time you saw me. me. After you had, after I had a certain surgery. Surgery. <laughs> a certain, <laughs> certain surgery. surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know, maybe it would have been different if I hadn't have been like out in a shopping mall or something with you the first time or, or whatever. You, you thought I was dressed too sexy. Well, maybe a little bit, yeah, for, <laughs> for shopping with your mother. <laughs> Once you start drawing lines in the sand and say, no, you're not a woman, you have to have these things, there's always going to be a biological woman who may not have those things. Do you know what I mean? That, well, you didn't have, like, breasts. There's always going to be a biological woman who doesn't really have breasts or who was born without two ovaries or without a womb or had a hysterectomy. And it's like, once you start saying those things that you need these physical attributes in order to be a woman, I think you're getting into trouble, and I think it's sort of fascist. Well, you yeah. were worried sometimes when, when I would have surgery Yes. You were oh, very well, scared. Well, I, w I was always very concerned when you were going and having your surgery because I didn't, I wasn't going, because I wasn't going to be there to be with you. And I really, I guess, even though you had tried to explain things as much as you could, what was going to happen and what you were going to do, well, I just was, you know, I was always worried, concerned that something was going to happen to you and you were in Mexico or you were in California or, yeah. and I wasn't there and, you know, yeah, and the out of town you, and, Yeah, and you are had scary. nobody there with you, you know, at all. A lot of feminists criticize transsexuals because we present like a female stereotype or a stereotype of femininity and end up making fun of women. I don't think all transsexuals are stereotypes of a woman. If you can be happy, then mm -hmm. all the other things can fall into place slowly but surely. But, you know, and it'd be nice to have a nice companion to go through life, really. Mm -hmm. I know transsexuals who are lesbians. I know transsexuals who are butch, femme, construction workers, flower arrangers, like all sort of a range of girls. I think everybody needs somebody. And, but I know that's kind of a little bit more of a difficult situation in her, her stance too, than for maybe lots of people. But you were sort of afraid about Swavek in that whole situation. Well, I just don't like the idea of you having a boyfriend that has a drug problem. I don't know what it means to feel like a woman, but at the same time, there is something instinctive in me that I feel like I do want to live like this and I do want to dress like this and I want to be socially accepted as a woman. It's not an easy thing, but it'll all come around. You know, it's like when you first started on the journey, it was a, a long journey, but you know, you're... You know, you've gone through a lot of obstacles, you overcome them, and, you know, hopefully you'll find somebody. Hmm. Yeah. I love you. I love you, too. Love you. <laughs> Bye. Now that I've got some money um, from this movie that I'm doing and stuff, I want to go down to Montreal and have my consult with Dr. Brassard, the sex change doctor. <laughs> Wait for me, I'm coming. You just go to the doctor and you just tell me what, you just tell me what it's all about. <laughs> doctor, she needs that pussy. She needs that pussy. What do I need to tell her? <laughs> what do I need to tell her about that pussy? It's just a consult after all. So, and his waiting list for, um, like sex change operations. Well, he makes you wait a year after your consult. Like you're not, you know what I mean? He makes you think about it for a year. Do you know anything about the procedure? How it works? What they do? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you want to hear her? Um, I think they chop the end of the dick off and then they make an incision down and then take Oh, yeah, and they take the inside of the dick and throw it away. And they take the outer layer of the dick that's, like, really sensitive, the outer skin. They turn it inside, 
Do you know what I mean? Okay. So it's a vagina. And then they make a little clitoris out of the head of your dick and attach that on. And then I think they make the labia lips out of the scrotum. When I was a kid, I thought I wanted to have a sex change, and I always thought that growing up. And when I first started transitioning, I was convinced I wanted to have a sex change. But I don't... And then for a while, I was like, oh, I don't want a sex change. I'll just live as a she-male. What's the recovery period like? Oh, I think it's brutal. I think it's like three months long. Oh, my God. I don't know. You have to dilate all the time. It hurts to sit on it. How do you pee? You pee normally. Oh, my God. You know what's the weirdest thing about a sex change my friend told me? You know how, like, you hear stories about if someone had their arm chopped off, they have phantom limb. Oh, my God. They think the arm is still there. They can feel the nerve endings, and the brain doesn't know it's not there yet. (laughs) My friends said all the girls I know at sex changes say they have phantom dick. Oh, my God. Yeah. I sometimes go back and forth, do you know, about what is just going to be simplest for me and what is is just going to make me the happiest. This whole process of transitioning and taking hormones and having surgery, getting a sex change, is all this just technological process. Like, it's not a process of nature. And so it's like, you actually, you're fucking nature up. You know, you're fucking up the way your body thinks it's supposed to work. Do you know what I mean? So everything has its the thing that I disadvantages. I worry that it's shaving years off your life. I'm sure it is. I'm sure. But... You gotta do what you gotta do. (laughs) Don't get me wrong, I would love to have been born a regular female who just, like, came with a pussy and it worked good and all that stuff. Do you know what I mean? That would have been ideal. Is this the most frightening out of all the work you've done? I do sometimes fall into a female stereotype, and I behave sometimes as a female stereotype, and it's been a real eye-opener to see that and to figure out where I pick those things up from. I'm really glad I did kink. Really made me examine how I live my life. I don't regret anything, and I think I had a blast. But I need to make certain changes or else I'm going to be miserable by the time I'm 40. I heard the doctor's cute. No way. Yeah, I heard that from different girls. That always helps, though. Yeah, you're really (laughs) cute. You got my dick open. I trust you. (laughs) I trust... Oh, I trust you. I have this idea in my head about what a normal girl is, and I want to be a normal woman. What is the appointment for? It's just a consult, right? So, like, if you want to have a sex change by Dr. Brassard, he won't let you have a sex change for, like, 12 months. I think for a lot of transsexuals, their currency in life comes from being a sexy kink to um, otherwise heterosexual men. And that's how they make their money, and that's who they date, and that's where they get their sex, and... That's where they learn to feel good about themselves, and I hate that. On the other hand, it's, a, you know, it's scary to give that up if you're going to have a sex change. Previous operations, problem with anesthesia. Previous operations, and they only gave you three lines? I didn't need to write on the back of the page how much alcohol and drugs I take. Um, maybe... Um, Tranny chasers come here and just hang out in front to meet Tranny sometimes if they're really desperate. <laughs> and try and talk girls out of it. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, cool. How are you? I'm good. How are yeah. you? I feel like with this exchange, I just feel like, yeah, I should do that. And that's sort of like the emotion attached to it. Not that I desperately need it this moment. If I have to wait two years for it, I can wait two years for it. Um, 
but I feel like, yeah, I'd probably be better off without, without my dick. I probably would be, feel more normal. <laughs> nice to meet you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. So what did he say? He was really, like, um, understanding and stuff, and I told him I'd seen his work before. I've seen his pussies yeah. and stuff, and I was, like, really, like, they look awesome. Complications are uh, numerous, actually, starting from the most minor one, which is a uh, reaction to a stitch to uh, death. Uh, that's why we do patients who are healthy for the procedure. And even in very healthy patients, we can have, we can, they can encounter complications. His answers to my questions, like his medical answers, were very reassuring to me. And, um, and he said tall girls, too, um, have um, a better chance of having more depth, just because of the way your insides oh, really? are arranged okay. and stuff. So he said that's really great for you. And he said no, when you wait, you don't need to wait till you're older to get it. You don't get anything better. Young individuals tend to keep their energy more than more mature. Uh, uh, we do surgery for patients who are much more mature than Nina. And in those, there seems to be a change. He was saying that, um, you know, most of his girls have orgasms and stuff like that. Oh, so great. Um, I'm not worried about that. And the girls that already went to him and stuff had orgasms. So I can still have oral sex. Of course, it's irreversible. So you can't go back. And, uh, but uh, looking at her, I would uh, think that she wouldn't want to go back. So, are you going to go <laughs> for it? I don't know. <laughs> I, th I don't know. May I think so. I, th I don't know, but I think so. Well, yeah. we'll be coming back here. I want to think about it. Yeah, maybe we'll end up coming back here. here with none other than Mitchell Rafel, editor of Fab Magazine, and of course he's here at this uh, incredible event. Hey Mitchell, how you doing? Very good, Nina. So what are you looking for tonight, Mitchell? Oh, just your usual boot-licking slaves to drag around and kick around, you know, someone to clean the house, do some light housework, that kind of stuff. When you're finished with that person, can you send them over to my house too? Sure, no problem. I've only lived as a female for like a year now, and so I feel like it's like going through a second puberty, transitioning and hormones and all that. And I think I behave in a lot of ways like a girl going through high school who does a lot of stupid things and goes out with dumb guys and thinks that giving blowjobs will make her popular. You can't spend your whole life trying to act like a woman. Eventually you just have to do the things you want to do and hang out with the people you want to hang out with and not constantly be searching for this validation of people saying, yeah, you're a woman, you're so feminine, you're a really beautiful woman, oh, you're a sexy woman. I also think that I spend a lot of time running around to clubs, chasing guys, behaving a certain way, having men chase me, talking on the phone to men, flirting with men, having sex with men, playing head games with men. That took up a lot of my time. That was like my passion for like two years. And it all seems very dry now. Um, can I lay down and can I do stuff like that? Well, you know what? No, don't lay down because it's too dirty. I'll just do you standing up. OK, cool. Because I can't move a lot in this dress, so. No, you don't need to. Just look sexy. OK. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really have new practices, new ways of dating, new ways of having sex. I'm just trying not to fall into my old patterns if they didn't end up making me happy. Do one where you're kind of like sticking your ass out, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I don't really have new ways of behaving. I'm just trying not to do those things that were a bit destructive. Even if they were really pleasurable. <laughs> okay, I do them once in a while, but try more in moderation. Perfect. Hold that. Perfect. Cool, is that it? Nice. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot.